Welcome to the second part of this non-fictional time travel through Berlin subway stations. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I recommend watching this one first. After the first part transported us to the 70s, this time we go to the 80s. Our journey through time begins at the subway station Rathaus Spandau, the year 1984. The station was opened just four years later than the last stations from the first part of my documentary series. And nevertheless, this station looks completely different than the stations of the 70s. No aluminum panels, no large-scale plastic elements or pop-art colors. Instead, a platform of the size of a cathedral. Marble and gold. If there were also red carpet here, the station could belong to Tony Montana's Mainson from the 1983 film Scarface. No question, we are in the Opperland world of the 80s. There was no money spared here. The station Rata Spandau is still the largest subway station in Berlin. By the way, the station was again designed by Rainer Rümmler just like all the other stations in this part. And the next of these stations on the way of Line 7 is Altstadt Spandau. The station Altstadt Spandau is smaller, much smaller than Rathaus Spandau. Everything is a bit simpler here. Nevertheless, the design doesn't necessarily look modest either. Simple, but not modest. White tiles, red borders and gold decorated lamps. Personally, the station design reminds me a bit of shopping malls and large furniture department stores built in the same era. There you often have a large, usually circular area that expands across all floors and has a huge fountain in it. Around the fountain there are stairs and levels connecting all the floors. And often there is a water feature every hour. These areas are also mostly designed with such materials. The only difference is that these areas are much larger than this station and usually have huge glass windows on at least one wall. So maybe I'm the only one who makes this association. Anyway, let's move on to the next station, Zitadelle. We are on the entrance level of the station. As you can see, this station with its brick look is somehow unusual for the 80s. What I mean is, you can't say the station looks typically 70s, 80s, 90s or whatever like this, but timeless in a way. This is without a doubt because of the theme to which Rümmler refers. Take a look at the wall across the stairs. There I have placed a picture of the citadel that gives the station its name. It was built in the 16th century and as you can easily see, the station's design is based on the citadel. Now let's go to the platform. The design of the platform and the entrance level are almost identical. Apart from platform displays and so on, there are only two things that have been changed here. First, the beam between the pillars and the ceiling is now painted dark blue on the sides and gold at the bottom. Second. The floor has been replaced by the light granite tiles installed in many subway stations today. This is not much compared to the stations of the 70s, still it's unusual because the 80s stations are otherwise are still in their original condition. Anyway, I can already hear the next train arriving. We skip a station and get off at the station Paulsternstraße. This is the entrance level of the station. The station Paulsternstraße was opened in 1984, like all other stations I have shown so far. The entrance level looks, at least in my opinion, almost a bit old-fashioned for that time. If you don't know any better, you might think that the station is possibly from the 70s. But you will soon lose this impression, when you move to the platform. These are the 80s too, colorful and richly ornamented. Rümmler decorated the track walls with a meadow landscape at night. The pillars in the middle of the platform are designed as trees. 
A colorful star forms the crown of the tree and refers to the name of the station, which translated as Paul Star Street. The design generally makes reference to the landscape that was once found here. A forest and meadow landscape along a river and the name Sternfelde for this landscape area. Stars appear everywhere here. You can also find them again on the blue ceiling. This very colorful design with plants, stars, blue ceiling and gold is definitely called cheesy. But doesn't that also belong to the 80s? I don't want to downgrade the station anyway. It is typical of its time, I think. We move on to the next station. We change the subway line and arrive in 1987 at the station Franz Neumann Platz. This station doesn't look so typical for the 80s. But instead it shows something very strong which is typical for Rümmler. Mosaics. At the last station, Paulsternstraße, the track walls were also decorated with mosaics. Here, however, more or less everything is full of mosaics. The track walls, of course. Because the stones are white, this is especially noticeable. But also the pillars are covered with relatively small tiles and the floor is mosaic-like too. I admit, compared to other stations, this station seems perhaps less spectacular, less impressive, because it doesn't seem so typical of the time. But it is important to me to show that the stations designed by Rümmler are not just typical of the time and would have been designed similarly by someone else, but that Rümmler had an own signature that connects all the stations. Unlike the previous stations, this station is not a listed building. More on that in a moment. For now, I think we should move on to the next station. Residenzstraße. I think the station looks more like the 80s again. At least a little bit more. A touch of gold helps. The station was also opened in 1987. The theme of the station this time is Berlin as a residence. Therefore brick pillars with colorful decorations and on the wall historical city maps, landscape views and image of antique sculptures. The station is also not a listed building, just like the previous station Franz Neumann Platz and the next last stop of this part of my documentary series. I hope that this station and the other two will soon be listed as well, because then it's not allowed to change their design by renovations. There are a lot of stations from the 60s and 70s that look completely different today. I already mentioned this in the first part of my documentary series. That could happen here too and that would be especially tragic because the stations from the 80s are still almost in their original condition. Perhaps this also has to do with the materials used, stone and tiles which are more resistant than the materials of the 70s. This seems to have kept the 80s stations from changing so far. But I digress. Let's move on to the last stop of this part of the time travel. Paracelsusbad. In my opinion, this is a really impressive station. Everything is just right here. The square pattern on the ceiling and the lamps look very 80s-like. More precisely, it's Art Deco style, but in the 80s it was revived. And I think this all blends into an 80s aesthetic here. The Paracelsus Bad is a swimming bath located right next to the station. So Rümmler designed the station to look like a fancy bathhouse. White and black tiles and a strong yellow in the borders giving the space a pleasant atmosphere. On the track walls there is again a mosaic. Pillars can also be seen here. They are probably supposed to be Roman pillars, a reference to Roman bathhouses. Because the stations of the 80s are still mostly unchanged today, it is worthwhile to look at these stations yourself once in Berlin if you want to make such a journey through time without a VR headset. Only platform displays, benches and so on have been replaced so far. And with this recommendation, the second part of this three-part documentary series ends. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, let me know. Next time I'll show you stations that opened between 1913 and 1927. I hope you won't be disappointed in the last part, because I didn't restore the original condition of the stations. 
In this case, unfortunately, it was impossible for me. Why? You will find out then. If you don't want to miss the next part and further time travels, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time in the third and last part of this documentary series.